Rifleman. Starring Chuck Connors. Hello? Hello, the house. Suppose they're up yet, Paul? Well, let's go find out. <laughs> Somebody home? After the younger son gathering all together went abroad into a far country, and there wasted his substance by living riotously. What was that word you just read? Living riotously. That's riotously. What does that mean, Grandpa? Well, that means, uh... Oh, well, it's just one of them fancy words. Never mind. <laughs> and join himself to one of the citizens of that country. And he sent him into his field to feed swine. That's swine. Like sunshine there, pig. Oh, swine. <laughs> time anyway. I was just teaching Woody a new word. He said that word swine. That was a nice word for a pig until they started calling human beings swine. Then they ruined the word for an indecent pig was concerned. <laughs> oh, I bet you came to get your Rihanna. By Jovi, I ain't got it finished yet. Give me that Rihanna, will you? Braden, oh, it's an art, Mr. Fogarty. I can wait. How do you learn to make it, Mr. Fogarty? I learned that when I was guiding General Fremont up in Idaho. What happened, Grandpa? What happened? Well, see, it was a mighty drowsy trip across this desert. We had to fight them Oglala and Sioux war parties day after day. It was terrible. And then we come to this real deep canyon. We had to get across or die. We didn't have any way to get across except we'd save back a few green hides. And when it comes to learning to raid raw hide or lose your scalp, Man learns to braid raw hide pretty fast, and he never forgets it either. You get over all right? Well, I'm here, ain't I? Still got my hair, too. <laughs> Mr. Fogarty, we're going into town later. Can we pick up any supplies for you? Uh, no, thanks. All my own supplies. Always have and always will. All right, maybe we'll see you later. Yeah. I'll try and have your head ready. According to my history book, General Fremont was never even in Idaho. <laughs> Mark, a man as old as Grandpa Fogarty, you know, has pioneered the country so much. He tells a tall tale once in a while. Chances are he's done a lot of brave things he isn't even telling about. Suppose that's why they keep on moving around so much? How do you mean? Well, Woody says that they hardly ever live in one place more than a few months. Mark, we get along fine with them, just minding our own business. Let's keep it that way, huh? All right.
bet you'd be a good pal out on a trap line. Are you all right? Of course I'm all right. Woody, you come on in here with me. We've got to get you a new pair of britches. Throw you in a rag bag first thing you know. Come on. Come on, Grandpa. What can I do for you, Mr. Fogarty? A pair of britches for the boys. We don't see enough of you, Woody. When do you start school? Oh, I'm not going to school, Miss Millie. I keep pretty busy out at the place. Well, a new pair of trousers for school, huh, Woody? Mr. McCain, I mind my own business. Expect my neighbors to do the same. Simmer down, Mr. Fogarty. School is everybody's business. How much do you, girl? That'll be 75 cents. Shall I put it on account? You don't derail me in no charge account. If I can't pay for it, I don't buy it. Mind my own business, go as I please, and expect my neighbors to do the same. Come on, Woody. That old Bronco's four square and hard as bedrock. Just imagine. That poor little fellow never knowing a mother's hand to tuck him in at night, seeing to his prayers. I hope you know how fortunate you are, Mark, to have a proper education. Oh, yes, ma'am. Poor little Woody, completely ignorant of the finer things in life. Oh, but he sure can read. Why, you should have heard him read to his pig in the kitchen this morning. His pig? In the kitchen? Yes, ma'am. She's smart, that pig. A pig in the house? Yeah. Oh, well, Woody's real smart for his age, though. As the twig is bent, so grows the tree. Oh, I'd better go pick up the mail. Excuse me, ma'am. See you later, son. Lucas, I have to talk to you as a responsible member of this community. How can we permit that child to be raised in a pigsty? Oh, wait a minute, Mrs. Dalrymple. You can see that Woody is a fine boy. But he's filthy. Probably doesn't eat right. And he has been missing school. Now, look, they haven't had a chance to settle down yet. You get... Lucas, you're head of the town council. I know I'm look, head we of the... all have to do our best to help that child. But Lucas, you as a father should be the first one to realize oh, Mrs. that. Mrs. Marshal Torrance. Marshal, something has to be done about that poor little Fogarty youngster. Oh, I don't know. He seems like a normal boy to me. Just dirty, hungry, and curious. Before that boy is absolutely ruined, he must be placed in a proper foster home. Grandpa wants to be left alone. I know. Then he must be made to understand it's for the boy's own good. Maybe just until he gets his place fixed up and livable. Mrs. Dalrymple, you, you don't know Mr. Fogarty. You better let him figure this out by himself. Lucas, now is your chance to help another boy. Just as you would want Mark helped if he were in need. Grandpa Fogarty's not too far out from the time every man was his own law. No ifs, ands, or buts about it, gentlemen. I'll do my duty, and I expect you to do yours. I know how you must feel, Lucas, but what if it were Mark? train. What's ailing you? Chief, you come out to offer me a deputy job, you just wasted your ride. Is that so? Yes, sir. You know, I, I stopped packing a badge when Woody was orphaned. Thought I'd play it safe for his sake. Well, time catches up to all of us. Yeah, don't it? <laughs> Mr. Fogarty, we stopped by to uh, have a talk about Woody. Woody? Hey, that Woody boy, he's a corker. <laughs> well, some of the ladies in town figure he ought to, well, he would have a more substantial home. Well, that is until you get on your feet and get settled. Lucas means that you'd maybe feel better if you knew Woody was in a nice home so he could go to school regular and church affairs and kid stuff. You know what I mean. You must be getting old. Hardly believe me ears. Well, you've got to figure what's best for Woody, Grandpa. You can see him all you want. Lucas McCain always trusted you as a friend. I'd be a poor friend if I didn't speak my true thoughts, Grandpa. 
Well, now, Mr. Fuss and Feathers, you just listen to me. That boy ain't living on charity. And there ain't nobody gonna make a grub line coyote out of him. There's a lot to be learned from poverty. Learning what's necessary and what ain't. Now, Woody's learning how deep he is, how strong he is, and how to depend on himself. How necessary it is to work to live. And how he can be proud of the work he does. He don't see me as scraping and abound to nobody for crumbs or leftovers. And nobody's taking my grandson away from me, and that's for sure. Don't be too hasty, Mr. Fogarty. I'm done talking, Marshal. There's a road back home. I didn't think he'd take it sitting down. He sure didn't. Bye, Mr. McKay, Mr. Park. Bye, Woody. You gonna have enough boards, Grandpa? Hey, you know the way I figured we're gonna have just about enough boards to build a flume all the way from the spring to the house? Gee, imagine water running right to our back door. Yeah. Without going into debt, either, for any pipe or lumber. Or nails, either, if you can straighten these out real good. Sure I can, Grandpa. Hey, Fogarty! Who's that, Grandpa? Yeah, more nosy neighbors, I reckon. Time was when a man could have some peace and quiet around here. You just keep on working, I'll go and get rid of him. Yes, sir. a bum, always a bum, huh? Ah. Do you give up hopping freights and getting in people's way? They sentenced you for life. I changed that sentence. Like you changed my plans for the Pacific Express some five years back. You broke out. And that took some doing. That took some dying to. Ah! <laughs> you know, with all that money, you could have it a little fancier around here. Hey, you ain't spent it. I never had it to spend! I sat in a wet stone cell five years thinking about that money. And that five years, that made me kind of careless about human life. Now, you just tell me where it is. That's simple. I've told sheriffs, soldiers, treasure hunters, railroad bulls, and I'm telling you, I never had that mind. I'm the only one could have touched it. Oh, you're going to lose your old age holding out my money. Hey, you listen to me. When you dynamited that train, I was a bum riding the rod. I never knew anything about that money then or since. And I'm telling you like I told everybody else. I figured that money burned up in the wreck. Then how come you're hiding out here? Oh, everybody kept on nagging at me about the money shipment. What did you do with it? Where is it? I got so sick of suspicion of cut and run. Nobody's bothered us here. Us? Yeah. Me and my pig. Got so I couldn't even tie my shoes without somebody watching me. Oh, 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 what a sad story you tell. Ah, oh, that hand. That hand needs looking after. Save it. Now I know you've got my money. I'm going to wring your scrawny red neck, and I'm going to tear this shack apart till I find it. It's in the back, Demo. All of it. In what bank? North Martin. You would open the morning. One little mistake. One mistake, and you're going to beg for a quick end the way you used to beg for a, a crust of bread. 
All right, now tend that hand. Yeah, it needs looking after. I tore that to the god. Yeah, stupid god. God! It's a good sign for stings. That's good whiskey, you always. Oh, that's, that's been a long time. Hey, you, you, you need a yard polish on that hand. Oh, man. I waited too long to lose you now. I'm just going to the spring to get a yard for your hand. Yeah. Ain't no place I got left to run. If you ain't back in a minute, I'm coming after you. And I ain't got nothing to lose, you know. Straighten nails unless I'm watching you every second. I tell you and I tell you, and you never learn nothing. I can take them apart, Grandpa. I'll put everything back, just like it was. Oh, it's all wasted. You won't even help me build a flume. You're the most no good kid I've ever seen. I'm sorry, Grandpa. You're uh, too late to be sorry. You and me's come to the parting of the ways. You go on your way, and I'll go mine. But, Grandpa, I ain't got no place to go. <laughs> The Marshal and then McKay and them do-gooders in town. They want to set you in the lap of luxury. Go on into them. I won't do it again, Grandpa. I promise. Just don't talk like that. I love you, Grandpa. <laughs> you scat out of here. I'm sick and tired of you waiting me down like a millstone around my neck. Go on into McKay and them others. They'll bait me and spoil you rotten. Go on. Well, all right. All right, I'll find me a place. A pleasure that ain't a cranky old man yelling at me day and night. Go on! You and your old water flume. I ain't never coming back. You hear? I ain't. Go on! Get off my property! I ain't never coming back. You ain't worth it. Stirrups just aren't long enough for you anymore. Guess I'll have to make you some new ones. I like them. Well, it's no good holding on to things you can't use, son. Say, Paul, you know those old school books that I've already gone through? Mm-hmm. Why don't I give them to Woody? He, well, they're for his age, and he could keep up by studying them at home. That's a good idea, son. You know, Woody may be living in a new home in town soon. Well, he's already got a home. Are they moving again? No, Mark. You see, Mrs. Dalrymple is looking around for a place for Woody to stay while his grandpa fixes up their place. Oh, that nosy old Mrs. Dalrymple. Now, she's only thinking of what's good for Woody. Now, you've seen the conditions. It's not like they can't see each other anymore. But, Paul, they got it better than you think. They get along real well, laughing and working together, and, and they figured out plans for fixing up their place. Mark, you know, the old man can't see too well anymore. Suppose a gun goes off or a fire breaks out or an axe slips and Woody gets hurt. But, Paul, their thing's just as important. Woody's got his grandpa and they stick up for each other, the two of them together, like you and me. And, Paul, you wouldn't let anyone separate us if things weren't going right, would you? No, Mark, I wouldn't. I guess sometimes we grown-ups can't see the forest for the trees. I'm going to see what I can do to let Woody stay with Grandpa. Oh, that's great, Pa. And when school starts, I, I can ride with Woody every day. Mr. McCain! Oh, Mr. McCain! Oh, Mr. McCain! Woody, what is it? Where's your Grandpa? Back home. What's wrong? You sick? No, I ain't sick. Easy now, son. You tell it the way you want. He said I was no good to him. I need a pair of stilts. And he told me to get out and find another place. Well, that doesn't sound like your grandpa. You sure you haven't forgotten something? No, sir. That's the way it was. But I was thinking. 
Maybe the heat's affecting him. Or it was that man that come. Grandpa's a real old man, you know. Maybe there's something wrong. Him and me, we don't talk back to each other. I ain't really crying, Mr. McCain. I just don't know what I'm gonna do. Of course, you're not really crying. Because you're here with us and there's really nothing to cry about. Look, it's getting late. I'll bet you're hungry. Mark, can you fix up some scrambled eggs? Sure can. With strawberry jelly on it. Now, look, I've got an errand to do. I won't be long. You stay with Mark, huh? Come on. I'll show you how I can cook. <laughs> Tramp all your life. I never asked for more than I needed. I never broke a law or hurt a soul in my life. Mm. Except maybe Woody. Woody who? Woody. Best boy I ever knew. <laughs> Take my advice, old man. Don't trust nobody. Don't care about anybody. Don't work for anybody except yourself. It's time we get started for town. Huh? I told you that bank don't open in the morning. Bottle's empty! That bank has got to give you your money when you ask for it. Suppose, suppose they would. Suppose it ain't in that bank. Old man, I'm getting sick of you and your foolish ways. Who is that? man, if you so much as cough, I'm going to blow it right back down your throat. <laughs> Just a pig coming back to say goodnight. <laughs> Come on, let's go. All right, hold it. Grandpa, you hurt? Hurt? No, I'm about to say anything. I gotta go find Woody. Don't worry, he's in good hands. Now look, Mr. Whoever you are, I, uh, I'm harmless. I, I mean, I mean, you, you, you scared me when you came in without a, a, a friendly hail. My old Fogarty there and I, we're old time partners, so to speak. Luke, you all right, Luke? I'm all right, Grandpa. Tell you all about it. Never would have believed you could do it, Mr. Fogarty. It sure is a big improvement. Yeah, the trouble is, when you get water, you gotta find something to wash. You know, people, floors, clothes, anything. <laughs> Can't hardly persuade sunshine in the house anymore. <laughs> Wanna try, Paul? No, thanks, son. You go ahead. And take one big step for me. Ha, 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 ha. 